Welcome back to the table and our holiday gift guide. This is going to be probably our last holiday gift guide for 2022. Well, we've we've um, given a lot of gifts so far. Good we ideas. have. We have given given a lot of ideas. This is for those, maybe, is it for those last minute shoppers who are running out to Target at the yeah, last I, minute to get batteries I, I and maybe so. a couple more gifts? Well, here's the thing that, for one thing that people might not know, is that Target has very much up to their game when it comes to board games. No they pun have, intended. They can carry a lot of hobby games, and they carry even a lot of exclusive games that you only find at Target. So if you're one of those parents or significant others, husband, wife, or whatever, and you don't really know how to maybe navigate the local game store scene. Or don't want to. Or don't want to. For whatever to, reason. Uh, it's not, you know, it, it's a acquired language they speak there, right? And you, you got to have to be in the hobby to interact in those places sometimes. So you can just go to Target and not, get some great games. Not to mention... You're probably if you're a human being on the planet Earth, you probably go to Target every once in a while. I'm guessing. I mean, I do. I love most, Target. Most people do. Now they have some other games too. I did want to mention some of these. These are not exactly honorable mentions, uh, but I thought these are the kind of games that I think, as a kid, they're easy to get. You might use them one year and then they're done with them. But you know what? It's like twenty bucks. One of these ones, I went to Target just this morning to take a look at what they had on selection. One of them that draw, caught my eye was Chomp and Charlie. Oh, yeah, the, the squirrel with the nuts. It was a squirrel, and you're rolling a die to see what color nut or how many nuts to put in the squirrel's mouth. And then eventually, poof, all the nuts pop out, and then everyone, it's a mad dash to grab all the nuts. The cool thing, I thought, was its eyes were wide open as you start stuffing nuts in its mouth. And then... They like close, and he has this really cartoon look expression, That's like he's about funny. to burst. All this. Anyway, this comes, I can't remember the publisher, but they Goliath. had a, Goliath. Yep. They had a line of games that were all effectively not the same, but very similar. That, that same premise of like, right? There was shark Pushing attack. Your where, luck almost. Yeah, you were like, oh, he put another thing in the shark's mouth, or there was greedy grandma, which I'm not sure. I think they're just coming up with adjectives I think and so. nouns. But what, sound, what, what, can, what alliteration can they had do a picky there? cat or something like that where the cat didn't want certain snacks and it would toss the snacks. Like it. a cat would. But we're not here to talk to you today about those kind of games. We're talking to you about games that uh, probably more enthusiast games that you could find there, but maybe some other ones too. You know, yeah. taboos, there's nothing wrong with taboo. No, there's nothing wrong with any of those games at no. Target. But I think we chose five that we think are good for... The, the gamer in your life, the person that plays games as a hobby or yeah. is looking to maybe get into that, like you've played games like Catan and Ticket to Ride, and, or maybe you've just- Both some, available some, at Target. Both available at Target, including some versions of Ticket to Ride that are Target exclusive. Yeah. This is not sponsored by Target in any way. No, ironically, we're sponsored <laughs> by Walmart today, which is really <laughs> weird, but sorry, Walmart. No, we're not sponsored by anyone. Uh, but we just, I think that they've done a really great job. So let's jump into uh, the top five games you can get right now at Target. Yeah, number one is called Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. I don't know if you've heard of Gloomhaven. It's the number one game, according to Board Game Geek. It's sold a ton. Frosthaven yeah. is now delivering. It's also a massive, massive game. Jaws of the Lion is sort of, if you haven't heard of it, an entry level into the Gloomhaven world. And I have to admit, I actually think it's my preferred version of the game. This is such a great get your feet wet experience because it's the one that introduced the book concept yeah. instead of the boards. So it's a lot less cumbersome. And I actually kind of dig the book concept of the maps are in a spiral ring, uh, spiral ring book. And it's a very tutorial aspect. The first scenario, or maybe first three scenarios, walk you through introducing you to more and more right. concepts right there in that same book, kind of outside and along the map. Yeah, it's, which is really it's cool. really smart. It's really smart. And they even like give you starter cards. Like you have starter decks that have, almost like when you're playing a video game tutorial, these cards have all the rules on the card. Yeah. So you kind of know what you're doing. And then as you play through, it kind of starts to let you do more of that work and let you kind of know the rules on your own, but it really does handhold you through a couple levels so that by the end of the campaign, you could go play regular Gloomhaven. And I think that's the idea, right? That is the idea, yeah. They're very clever marketers over there at Cephalo Fair. But it's also just great extra content. It's a great story. Yes. It takes place in that Gloomhaven universe. So if people have already played Gloomhaven in your life, this is still worth getting. It's got new characters, new strategies, new abilities. Like it's it's still a really cool game. Yeah, while it is on one hand my first Gloomhaven, it doesn't have to be my first Gloomhaven. <laughs> right. You can you can get it for anyone. The second game is completely different sort of experience. I'm gonna let Ryan talk about it because yeah. he's actually played it. I'm going to get a copy myself because I want to play it so badly this holiday season. It's Box One. It's called Box One, and I'm gonna tell you nothing about it. 
No, but for real. Number this three is a, on our list. This is a solo, or I guess you could have multiple people kind of gathered around, but it's a it's a puzzle game. And if I even try to tell you it might ruin what's it. gonna happen, it's going to ruin it. I can tell you this though. This game was designed by Neil Patrick Harris, who is a huge gamer. Yeah. Not only that, he's a big fan of magic and puzzles. So he does a lot of magic sets, he does a lot of puzzles. This kind of brings a lot of different stuff together in one box. There's some trivia, there's some puzzle solving, there's some outside the box thinking that goes into it. So some logic stuff. There's just a lot of stuff that goes into this one box, but it actually does like present a narrative and a story that you kind of He's solve. Al you're already ruining it. I'm not ruining anything, would you but say it's, it's very, very smart. Would I'll you say, say it's along the lines, not like exactly like an escape room, but it does, does it push the same buttons as an escape room type game? I can tell you it's like nothing you've ever played. Okay. It's just very... Neil Patrick Harris is a smart guy. He's and such if, a tease. We're, we're also not sponsored by Box One if he did or a, Neil Patrick Harris. If he did a Box Two, I would grab it immediately. Box Two. <laughs> I would grab it immediately. <laughs> yeah, so look for this. You can't miss it. It's a big, like, keyhole with Neil Patrick Harris's eye looking yeah, out okay. at you. Uh, don't let that intimidate you. Oh, it's so much fun. The next one on our list is Horizons of Spirit Island. Uh, Spirit Island is, I think, maybe the highest... Or is it the highest rated or one of the most highly rated cooperative games? I mean, Gloomhaven is higher. Well, but Glo Spirit yeah. Island is very high. It's, it's But in the traditional sense of a right. cooperative board game, uh, Spirit Island is right up there. Uh, Horizons is sort of a streamlined version of that. Easier to play. Yeah. Uh, lower barrier to entry in terms of the cost. Because I, oh, sure. I think the cost is quite a bit down there. Uh, it uses like components that are maybe a little less than the, the original retail game. version. Like you're not going to get the super deluxe, but you don't need it for this. Yeah, this is your entry level into the world of Spirit Island. And if you're already into the world of Spirit Island, what's kind of cool is I think they have like five or yeah, so five or new spirits. spirits that are completely new and usable with old school Spirit yeah. Island, which is kind of cool. I'll be honest, the the setup and learning the the rules learning of, of Spirit Island is the biggest hurdle in that game. It can be intimidating. So having a version where the board is already preset, everything tells you where everything goes. You don't have to worry about all the modular stuff, the difficulty cards. Like it takes a lot of that hard work out of it and just lets you get right to playing, which I think is great, especially if you're trying to get other gamers in your life into Spirit Island. I like Jaws of the Lion. This is almost like my first Spirit Island, but yeah. it still is a a, a gamery game. It's a very good yeah. game still. Uh, the next one on our list, and by the way, Spirit, uh, the Horizons of Spirit Island, I believe, is Target exclusive, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Yep. Which is an interesting thing that Target is doing. A lot of, in fact, I think Jaws of the Lion originally yeah, it was, was originally a Target, Target exclusive, exclusive too. Yeah. As is the next one, and it is called Planted. This one is from Phil Walker Harding. Yeah, he did Barren Park and yep. another uh, Target exclu exclusive Summer Camp, which was a big hit as well. Oh, that's right. I didn't see Summer Camp today when I was at Target, but I did see Planted <laughs> and. I don't know too much about the game, but the vibes that I'm getting is it's you're drafting plant cards uh, into sort of a tableau. I think you can have like five or six plants in your home. You draft these cards, and then you have to feed them and take care of yeah. them, um, which I am awful at in real in life. In real life, right. So maybe the board game will be better. There's no plants in, in my it's, house. It's true. Uh, but yeah, plant it. It, give, it gave me, it, not that the game plays like Wingspan, but appearances alone, if you looked at this on the table, your first thought would be, oh, it's like Wingspan, but plants. It, no, just from the look of it. I think it appeals to that same ga gamer, too, that same level. Like, it's, yeah. it's super casual, but it can also be played with a lot of depth. So I think that his games, Phil Walker Harding's games in general, are very easy to play, very low on rules, but have a lot of complexity and strategies. And I think that Planted is no exception, so that anyone can play it, anyone, any gamer in your life could probably play this, but they'd still be able to appreciate all that went into the design. And that is a common theme with a lot of these Target exclusive games or games that are designed with Target in mind. Yeah. Uh, and this and Horizons of Spirit Island are very much like that. However, the last one is not exactly built with that necessarily in mind because there is sure. a little bit of learning that you have to do. And our last one is the Dungeons & Dragons starter set or... The Essentials Kit, which is maybe even a little a notch above the starter set. But these are meant to be entry level to Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. But let's be real, even entry level to Dungeons & Dragons requires some commitment. It does require some commitment. This is definitely a game for people that are interested in Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. I mean, right now it's huge in pop culture. Anyone that watched Stranger Things or any other kind of content can tell you People are talking about D&D, they're playing D&D, it's becoming widely accepted, and I think a lot of the younger generation is starting to ask what it means to play D&D. Yeah. Now, when I was a kid, 
I just grabbed books and I started learning it from the book and I started GMing or running the games with absolutely no idea what I was doing. But these beginner kits actually kind of have guided steps that will yeah. help you get there. So if you're a parent that wants to play with your kids or your kids are old enough to kind of follow this guide, it presents you with an adventure to go on, pre-made characters that are just, that exist. And of course, like tons of tips and things about how to run these games and a condensed rule book because you don't need to know all of the minutia, all of the rules to be a kid playing D&D. &D. And it that's, gives you, that's the biggest thing yeah. that it jumps over. The biggest <laughs> hurdle it jumps over is like, it says, okay, forget about those volumes and volumes of books just for a second. And here, just read these few pages. Now, it does take some reading, but I think you hit the nail on the head. It, great for a parent who has kids that have been like, oh, what's D&D? &D? You're right. And you could run it out of this. It's not exactly paint by numbers, but it does guide you through as the person who's running it, the DM, uh, how to basically guide someone through the and, story. And how and to be a DM. How to, how and, to like, take those And a little bit skills. about how to be a DM. Yeah, which those skills are great for everything in life. I'll tell you, being able to organize a campaign and run a group of people at a table, those skills carry over. And tell a story. Yeah, that's true as well. And I love seeing kids. I, I see a lot of stories from parents that got this for their kids. And then their kids have come back wanting to run D&D for their parents. And that's just a really cool moment. That would be a cool moment. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'd want to sign up for that, depending on the kid. <laughs> but anyway, those are our five target picks for mm -hmm. our holiday gift guide. If you have any questions about them at all, or if you've never heard of Target, I'm not sure who you are, but uh, head on over to Target and take a look for these games. And until next time, as always, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Bye.